This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have a call on a little cart that's not working. This is a Delfield cart. They're saying the top and the bottom, but check this out. Look up here. This is swollen. It's it's swollen up. And look back here. This this is slightly swollen up, but this is severely swollen up. It's pushed up somehow. It's like it's frozen. And then I haven't done anything yet, but when I pulled the back of the box off, look at this. This looks like glycol. Because they, they fill these things with glycol. Look at that. And then look at the back of this. Looks like it's been running down the glycol. So what is going on here? This is very interesting. I don't really understand what happened here. You can't fit the pans in there anymore because this is swelling out. It's the most bizarre thing ever. So they don't fit in there anymore. So top and the bottom are running and we're running low pressures. Um, it's currently about 75 degrees in this kitchen. So our condensing temp over ambient should be about 20 to 25 degrees above that but we're only running a 70 degree condensing temp. So we have low head pressure and low suction pressure. And you guys probably can't hear it, but it sounds like uh, we're feeding vapor through the expansion valve. I can just hear it up here. So we're gonna do a leak test on this guy, put some nitrogen in it and see if we can figure out where this leak is at. So I went ahead and uh, recovered the charge, filled it up with nitrogen and just put a tracer amount of 404 in there. We got our pressures up to 211, which is a little bit high, and we're just doing a leak check. And I have a hunch that there's a leak in the cold rail. Look at this thing is going berserk all around the cold rail. It sticks so well. Totally, totally leaking up there. Look at that. It's totally leaking in the cold rail. So, and that must have something to do with the back. There's no, it's weird. suspected a leak in the top I went ahead and cut the top section out of the picture welded on service ports and we're doing a pressure test so I pressure tested it up somewhere 400 and some change and we've already dropped 7 psi in 6 minutes I'm gonna let it keep going just for the heck of it but yeah we're got a leak up in the top section for sure so that's a problem so I'm back at my shop now, and I'm gonna figure out what happened with this box. We got a new box, they replaced it. But I wanna know what caused these things to swell up and pop. So they're completely pushed up. Yeah, it's a trip. And it has a refrigerant leak, remember, in the cold rail. So. I'm gonna, I have a hunch here, but let me uh, do some investigation and pull the back of the box apart. We're gonna start by uh, draining the glycol out. I originally thought there was no glycol left, but there's fluid in there. So we're gonna pull that stuff out. Here's the back of the box, okay? Nothing crazy here. Originally, I was worried because there was like glycol stains right here, and I was like, maybe someone put a screw through, but no, my, my conclusion was that's not what happened there. But the back of this box all had pink glycol. There's like some residual left right here, but it's hard. But I had cleaned all the pink glycol off. And we know that it had a refrigerant leak up in the top. Okay, because I had pressurized it. There's barely any nitrogen left because it leaked everything out. Yeah, I had a quite a bit of nitrogen I had left in there. Okay, so I'm gonna drain this glycol out of here. Should be full of glycol. I have a hunch that it's full of water and that the water froze and lifted this thing up and smashed the refrigerant lines and caused a leak. Okay, so it has a little fill port right here. I'm gonna pop this off and I bet you water's gonna come pouring out. See what we can do. Actually, it's just pressure. Well, let's see if I can get fluid to come out of there. It's full of it. Okay, so that's not going to allow it to drain. But I know when I'm moving the box around that I can hear it sloshing around. 
So taking off this little cap, didn't let it, I believe that's just an overflow. Again, this is all theory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to start disassembling this box. It looks like maybe I can do these pop rivets and if I do these pop rivets, maybe this top shell will pull off and then we can get a better idea what's going on. So I've never disassembled one of these. I don't think they're meant to be disassembled, but there was a bunch of pop rivets all along the side. And same thing on this side over here. I just ground them down real quick, the heads of them, and then broke them free. And there was a couple pop rivets back here. It seems to me like this top section is just sitting there. It seems to me like this piece will come right off the base top of the top. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to pry up on it and see if I can get it to pop off. So it's kind of, I'm just prying up on this. And it seems like it's just like uh, sealed on, like glued on. And we're trying to, yeah, it seems like it's just a, a glue. Yeah, it's coming off. So it's just going to take some time of prying. Should probably get some better gloves on. I've got the top off. I'm just trying to figure out how, again, I have a hunch that water's in here because we had a leak up in here. So I want to figure out how to solve that. One of my thoughts too, because I saw a bunch of pink glycol right in this area that maybe someone put a screw through the back of the box and pierced the glycol, you know, like the, the pan area, but that's not the case. This hole, I've got the foam pulled back. There's no marks down there. And there's no glycol in there, nothing pink. Same thing here, here's another one right here. Nothing in there, so that, okay. Dodged a bullet there, because I thought maybe someone messed up and put too long of a screw in there. Not the case. So we still haven't figured out where, why the glycol leaked out. Now again, this whole area right here, like right around this screw, had pink glycol running all the way down. And I can't figure it out, so we'll get it. I'm gonna keep going with it. I had another hunch too, and I think it's kind of being disproven that this top piece like wasn't sealed. Again, I don't know if there's water in here or not, but what, what, what else would let, if it's glycol, it shouldn't freeze. And something clearly made this expand up. It froze so much with, with it has to be ice. And I bet you when we, um, when we end up opening this up, because I'm gonna find where the leak is too. My theory is, is that we're gonna have smashed refrigerant lines from ice. If this thing had glycol in it, because that's what it's supposed to have. It's supposed to have glycol around the refrigerant lines to help make it even cooling process. So I still don't understand. So I'm gonna try some other things. We're gonna see if there's any leaks. We're gonna try moving and tipping this thing to see if we get any glycol leaking out. Again, I was thinking that maybe like while the restaurant was waiting for the parts one time they were icing it down which is a very common practice they'll do an ice bath up here and i was thinking maybe water like you know diluted the glycol or something but i don't know again i'm, I'm intrigued to know where this glycol or why this thing froze and smashed the lines so we'll get to it I guess it's, maybe, I don't know. I still don't know what's going on here or what happened potentially. So far, everything that has come out of there has just been pink glycol. I thought it would be diluted down. It's not. So my next test is to see if when I flipped it over, if any glycol would leak out the other side, then that might prove my theory that it filled up with water. Other than that, I don't know what else could cause a leak. We'll continue to deconstruct this thing, but let me pull up on this. See if I... So there's no leaking glycol when it's upside down. So I don't think there's any way that that could have been diluted with water. So that debunks my theory there. Very interesting. So there's no leaking anything. So this thing is sealed. This unit actually has a really nice construction to it. This is the actual cold rail unit, stainless steel. It's got two drain plugs refrigerant lines. I'm assuming this is a overflow 
and uh, this is for your temperature controller but it's encapsulated in this piece which i was able to pull it off uh there's no glycol stains in here this right here is i believe just for me pulling it out from the overflow there's like a little bit of pink but my theory was that somehow this thing was full of water but i can't see any leaks where there'd potentially be water yet so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this drain plug. There's a little bit of glycol right here because I had already popped this loose in this drain plug. So I'm gonna carry it over and um, drain it out on that pot and that bucket right there. That certainly doesn't look diluted with water. Looks like it's just pure glycol. The foam is just from me moving the box around, but interesting, very interesting. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut this guy now. Um, many years I did this kind of stuff without using ear protection. You learn better so I've got earbuds that block off the sound completely safety glasses of course so we're gonna cut this bottom off All right, so this is how these lines, they sit in here. And they're just held by these brackets and they just sit together. Um, I don't see anything yet. I will say that right here, I made a little nick when I was cutting with the grinder. So that's not, that was not already here. I pulled up the lines over here and I'm gonna try to get them out so we can investigate to see where the actual refrigerant leak is. It's interesting though. Filled this guy up with nitrogen. And nothing was like peeing out, pissing out, but there's a couple spots that looked a little suspect to me. So I just spray some uh, salt bubbles, and this one's one right here. This is the big blue leak detector. I'm gonna finish spraying the rest of it. See if I see anything else. I did. I, I didn't put a chase or a refrigerant in here, so that's why I'm just using soap bubbles, or I'd use my electronic. Hmm, it's interesting. Nothing over here. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's just like a little micro something or other. This is the pan chiller unit. I pulled these lines out. They were secured. I bent them out of the way. This is twisted because I had to kind of bend them out. I didn't want to break this. I have this pressurized with nitrogen. Um, the leak is right over here. You can see, it's very difficult, but you can see where it's been rubbing very lightly. Now this right here is from my grinder, but this is not. You can tell that this has been rubbing out. It's old. You can even tell on this one where, see this is my grinder, but look next to it, you can tell that's been rubbing out next to it too. Um, and then you can go in all the corners and see, you can just see like little, look right here. I know that's probably hard to see, but you can tell it's been rubbing there too. But anyways, the refrigerant leak is right here. Ironically, see where I nicked it with the grinder? That's not leaking. Just shows you that this is just like maybe a bad piece of copper or something. It's interesting. And then you come over here where I nicked it really good with the grinder. And it's not leaking either. Interesting. But yeah, there's really not much to these things. I mean, it looks like they took a solid piece of 3 8 pushed it through this little uh, fitting right here and then um, brazed it, the threads, and then brazed the fitting here. Um, this is the temp control sensing bulb um, dip tube, and it's sealed on the other end, so it won't allow any glycol or anything to get into it. So that's why it's imperative that when you put these sensing bulbs in for the, whether it be mechanical or digital controls, it's got to push all the way to the top, so that way it gets a proper, um, you know, surface contact to get proper temp control 
this is a glycol overflow, what I thought it was. So there's, I, I've always wondered because there's a cap on there and I've taken them off and they always just like drip, drip. And I always wondered if it would ever leak out all the glycol, but there's no way. This thing had two and a half gallons. If this is a five gallon bucket and it's, you know, looks like about two and a half gallons worth. So yeah, very interesting, but at least we figured it out. All right, this one started out as a service call on a little reach-in cooler that wasn't working. The complaint was that it wasn't working on the top or the bottom. So right when I got there, I pulled it into the back of the restaurant, plugged it in, and immediately noticed that the unit was low on charge. Um, I immediately found or picked up the trace of a leak using my uh, electronic leak detectors, the DTEC Select. I picked up a trace around the refrigerant lines going to the pan chiller section, okay? So I went ahead and cut out the rest of the video because there really wasn't anything else. I, I did leak check the rest of the system too. Um, dove into that, and I've done this before with other boxes. I've never had this happen on this particular brand, but I've had it happen on other manufacturers where we had a leak in the cold rail up top. So I know the procedure. So essentially, we cut the cold rail out of the picture. Um, and then isolate it and pressure test it and then do a timed pressure test. And that's actually if when you get a hold of the manufacturer, they want you, they have a specific criteria. They want you to follow all these different steps, documenting it with pictures and all that good stuff. Now, this particular box happened to be out of warranty. Um, so it wasn't covered under warranty to the best of my knowledge. Again, I don't. I just remember the first email that I sent, they said, no, it's not under warranty anymore. Now, the restaurant buys these refrigerators themselves, so I don't know what happened after this point. I don't know if someone ended up warranting something, who knows, but regardless, uh, we got the, the call to go install the new one, and when I sent someone out there to install the new one, I told them, bring the old one back to the shop, I wanna dissect the unit, and so that's why I went through it. Went ahead, and I had some theories, You know, I had all these different ideas in my head, like, what was going on. And initially, you know, I saw that glycol in the back of the, um, the box. I still don't understand what the pink stuff was. I'm almost wondering if it was like just the color of the marker, because you notice there was writing on the back of the box where one of the techs had written something, you know, I still don't understand why there was what I thought to be pink glycol on the back of the box because there was no leaks and there was just probably just under two and a half gallons of glycol in that unit after all. So I did confirm that we had a refrigerant leak took it back to the shop, cut it open and found the leak. And it was on a spot where it looked like it had just been rubbing ever so slightly, but it also looked like maybe it was just some bad copper. Um, that was a very interesting one. I've never dissected a refrigerator like this where I actually took it apart and cut it open. Um, but you know, it, whenever we run into these problems, we always just say, oh yeah, it's got a leak in the pan chiller and then it just gets changed out and thrown away, you know? So it was kind of interesting to pull this thing apart. I was actually very impressed with the construction of that cold rail. Um, solid stainless steel sealed. I mean, you know, it's pretty decent, nice, good insulation, two and a half inches of insulation. It looked like, I mean, that was a pretty nice looking box the way they had it constructed. Now I would say that the cold rail, the whole assembly, being able to grind off those pop rivets seemed a little silly. Um, but once I got those off, like the top became loose, but then I had to work to get it all apart and everything. So anyways, just thought this was an interesting one. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I've been promoting this for a little while, but I've got a new YouTube channel that I'm starting. There's going to be a link in the show notes. Uh, I plan to start it the first of the year. It's going to be called HVACR Tools. Um, you may or may not be able to search it in YouTube. I don't know if it's popular enough to come up in the search results yet, but first, like the first line of text inside the show notes of this video will be a link to that channel. I'd really appreciate a subscription on that channel. Um, I'll be posting new videos where I just kind of go over tools. I didn't want to cloud this channel with tool reviews. Um, also in the show notes of this video will be links to the tools that I use because I always get those questions and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, live streams, Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific time where I answer questions and address things that come up from these videos. So, uh, tune in. Okay. Other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next one.